So in the last video that I released, um, you know, if you've seen it, I enjoyed a little bit of local woodland photography and it was quality. Um, but upon editing those photographs and, you know, releasing them on the video on YouTube and stuff, it's something about it just didn't feel quite right and I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, and I've been back to this very woodland a couple of times um, since that video and this is where you find me today, the same woodland. I think I'm really starting to figure it out a little bit. Um, woodland photography is something that's always frustrated me. I've always found it um, difficult, tough, and just quite hard to get my head around, <laughs> basically. Um, now, the two photographs that I got there in the last video, I'll put them up on the screen now, are pleasant, really nice images, and I like them. However, upon looking at them, I, I, I realised that both of them have quite strong subjects. So the first one here has um, a path that runs through it and to me that's that's a strong subject, you know, and a constant subject throughout the image. And then this second photograph um, is uh, all about this fallen tree, okay, quite a prominent subject and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But for me, upon viewing the images, obviously I'd been to this woodland before, they weren't quite capturing the essence of the woodland and, and most importantly how that woodland was making me feel. They were just two like nice, decent, pleasant woodland images. So when I came back to this woodland again, I really wanted to try and, I suppose I was gonna say think outside the box, but try and change my own way of thinking, try and change my approach to woodland photography and stop trying to look for subjects. When I come into the forest, I'm always trying to look for specific trees or strong prominent subjects, exactly like I've just shown you. And today, I'm creating myself a bit of a challenge, a bit of a project actually, if anything, to try and take more general images that really try and capture the, the emotion of this woodland. How is it making me feel? So that's what I'm starting with with this very image and you know upon coming into the woodland first thing I, I said to myself right what is it about this woodland that makes me want to come here why do I like it so much at the minute what is it so I really thought about it and I thought right well it's it's beautifully vibrant you know it's springtime we've got tons of different shades of green fantastic that's one thing keep that in my head what else um, I absolutely love all these areas of craggy limestone that's so characteristic of my local area. You've seen me in the past visiting these areas of limestone pavement and this is kind of a continuation of that, all these beautiful mini cliffs and you know that's one thing that makes this woodland special. And that gave me two um, elements of this woodland to play upon when I take my photographs so they're not necessarily prominent subjects but the elements that make this woodland unique and so that's what this photograph is really based around so I hope that what I'm saying really makes sense um, I'm still trying to make sense of it myself in my own head if I'm being honest but I'm basically trying to capture a photograph that portrays this woodland as an environment as a whole as a landscape within itself because I think it deserves that right rather than just finding something specific to photograph, like a path or a fallen tree, and then letting the woodland kind of frame that subject. So I hope that makes sense. And I think it's a bit of a breakthrough, if anything, for myself with regards to my woodland photography. And I'd say today <laughs> and for a while going forward, I don't expect my photographs to be very good, if I'm being honest. However, it's the start of my journey and it's something that I want to share with you and really try and explain my thought process. 
Um, so it's probably something a little bit different on this channel, but like I've been saying about the woodland recently, it's just beautiful to be within such a stunning woodland environment, taking photographs, so calming and relaxing. And I thoroughly enjoy the challenging aspect of woodland photography. So let me talk you through this first image. Right, so the first thing that I need to say here is the light is quite changeable at the minute. Um, it's one of those days where it's fairly cloudy, but there's quite a few breaks in the clouds. You can see at the minute, all the light's quite even. But every now and again, we're just getting direct sunlight, which isn't helping this scene whatsoever. But to try and carry on from what I was talking about just then, this is very much a woodland scene and there's no real prominent subject. So you can see this tree here, he's in the right hand third of my frame, but he's by no means a prominent subject. He just helps to tell the story of this photograph as a whole. And then just over the top of the camera there in the background, you can see we've got this beautiful section of those limestone cliffs or crags or rocks, whatever you want to call them, exactly like I was talking about. And on top of that, we have got a ton of different shades of green. We've got all the beautiful mint colours of these leaves on the forest floor or these plants, I'm not too sure what they're called. We've got a few ferns dotted about. We've got um, the greens of the mosses that cover some of these craggy rocks, these limestone rocks. And it really is stunning. And then as the photograph goes off into the background, there's all different shades of green even there. So they're the two sort of elements that I was talking about before, you know, all the different shades of green, the springtime vibrancy of this woodland, but also all these incredible um, characteristic limestone rocks. And I'm really happy with this one as, as, as a start point, as an image that's going to be the beginning of this journey of, of, of a different approach to woodland photography. Settings wise, I'll probably just turn my camera on, I say that I'd probably help a little bit. I'm shooting at ISO 100, it's currently on one tenth of a second, but I'm shooting at f4. I focused around about there, okay, which is about one third into the frame. Shooting at f4 should give me all of this immediate section nicely in focus, but then hopefully the focus should fall off ever so slightly the further back or the deeper that the photograph goes, which will help me to create a little bit of separation between what matters and what is essentially just a background area of woodland. So yeah, like I say, a really, really nice start. I'm happy with this one as a concept and I'm not really too bothered, I suppose, of how the photograph is gonna turn out, but it'd be nice if it turns out nice, of course. And uh, I hope you guys like it. Really try and, when I show you this, really try and think about what I was trying to convey. The essence of the woodland. Am I getting an emotion across in this image? Let me know. So I'm set up for the second shot of the day and before we get into the composition or anything, the camera is set up in what is easily a contender 
for the most ridiculous tripod setup I've ever had. Definitely into the top three, sales into the top three. But it's getting me the image, and we all know <laughs> that's all that matters. We've all been there, so I'm gonna perch up on my rock. It's still, so that's probably the bottom. I'm about five foot 10. I never have my tripod this high. Um, but it's working really well for this composition. So first thing to address is why is it so high? Is so I can angle the camera downward so that I don't have any sky in the photograph. And this is really cool um, because I've actually come up on top of these sort of limestone cliffs and I'm shooting back down into the valley of this woodland, if you will. Um, but it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And in relation to what I'm talking about, you know, how I'm trying to capture the essence of this woodland, I really feel like I'm doing it within this photograph once again. Um, so this image hasn't got any of the limestone cliffs. Um, however, I really feel like it's a fantastic representation of, you know, the springtime woodland. And for this woodland in particular, it's capturing loads and loads of beautiful, vibrant colours. Um, but one thing that I've really tried to do here is um, actually order the trees in a certain way. So usually when I'm in the woodland, I'm really trying to make sense of all the chaos um, by just simplifying it. So I'm wandering around the woodland, always trying to find areas where I can take a simple photograph. My last two images, uh, sorry, the last two photographs in my last video were perfect examples of that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that sometimes it's actually quite nice to really try and embrace the chaos of a woodland because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. But I still tried, cried, oh, I've still tried to create a little bit of order by organizing these trees in a certain way. So I've got this one tree on the left hand side that's leaning into the right and that's quite an important subject within the left hand side of this frame. But then on the right hand side we've got this, I think it's a beech tree, um, it's almost got this arm um, of a branch that's leaning in the opposite direction. It creates a nice sort of frame and a balance, a left right balance. Then I suppose kind of in the center of the frame we've got another fairly prominent tree. Um, that's another important subject, but all of them combined, crisscrossing amongst each other, are make, making for quite a nice general woodland scene. And the colours in this are absolutely beautiful, fantastic. Um, I will mention the light once again. You can see at the minute it's way too harsh. I don't like these conditions for woodland photography really in general. But what I'm doing is just waiting for that sun to go behind a cloud, quickly jump up on my ridiculous rock tripod setup and grab the photograph. Um, similar concept to the last image, whereby I'm photographing on the, uh, photographing, I'm focusing on this one tree on the left hand side and then shooting at F4 um, to try and get a little bit of a, um, a blur effect in the background, you know, to try and let the focus fall off a little bit. ISO 101 15th of a second. It's fairly windy, so there might be a little bit of movement in some of the leaves, but I don't mind that at all, if anything. It just helps to tell the story. But another decent photograph, I think, that really, or hopefully, portrays the essence of this woodland. Right, so as promised, the hashtag 10 mile radius challenge, the three images that I've chosen. And yeah, just a quick thanks again for everyone that's been using that hashtag. Absolute mint, so many awesome photographs to choose from. Um, I've tried to choose three kind of different-ish sort of photographs this week. I'm not quite sure to, how to explain it. They're all still landscape shots, but probably just a few different elements and things like that and different types. Of photography i'm sure you'll understand once you see them but three mint photographs all the same and um, so the first image 
Um, I'll pop up on the screen here is from It's Johnny Keeley. A wonderful photograph uh, from the Shropshire Hills, I believe. Um, I also think this guy has a YouTube channel as well, so definitely go and check it out. Uh, but yeah, mint photograph that I think was taken with his drone. And I don't know, I think I wanted to use this because it's a type of photography um, that I used to love. And this is something that I definitely still regard as landscape photography, but yeah, I love how he's just kind of modeled himself, used himself as you know a, a prominent subject within the frame. He's put himself within the bottom right and third. And obviously just what a scene behind him. Really, really cool. And I think it's just quite a creative type of landscape photography that really inspires me, you know, using your drone and putting yourself within the frame. But yeah, what a beautiful scene. Um, and thank you so much, mate, for using the hashtag, much appreciated. Now, next up is this image from JS underscore images. Now, I picked this one, um, apart from the fact it's just a stunning, stunning photograph. Um, but he said here that he's, this is a HDR image. Now, I, generally speaking, don't really like HDR photography um, in the sense that all your shadows are perfectly exposed and all your highlights are perfectly exposed and you've blended it all together. Sometimes I think it can look quite sickly. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree on that. You know, I love my shadows and sometimes I even love blown out highlights. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with it. But I wanted to choose this and show you guys this image because I think it's a really good example of how HDR photography can be done right. You know, it, it doesn't look to me like he's lifted the shadows up too much here on Kefili Castle. He's done it just enough that you can see a little bit of detail within the castle, but it still doesn't look sickly and unnatural. Obviously just a beautiful image, fantastic symmetry. Um, I'm going to use the word serenity once again because that's what this portrays to me. And if you look closely, there's even a little dove down there in the foreground. So thank you very much for that one as well, mate. Um, another cracking, cracking photograph. Uh, and last up is this image here um, from Izzy Abulila. Um, and definitely just wanted to um, choose this photograph because of the, the, the long exposure feel to it. Um, well, I mean, it's a long exposure photograph through and through. Absolutely beautiful fairly minimalist and one thing that I love about this is how the sea or I'm not even 100% sure if it's a sea it could be a lake or the water either way kind of just blends into the sky up there on the top third um, and that's something that I absolutely love about long exposure photography it makes this almost in a way become two elements that subject there which looks like perhaps a broken old pier and then the background everything's just one I absolutely love that about uh, long exposure photography this looks like a really long exposure probably more than a couple of minutes and i absolutely love the reflections as well um, underneath that sort of broken down pier whatever it is uh, fantastic movement in the sky as well and all around I, I just find this such a pleasing pleasing photograph i love how um the pier i keep saying that i hope it is a pier is kind of centralized within the frame um, and it's a lovely crop at what looks like maybe eight by ten and yeah just absolutely beautiful so thank you all for using that hashtag and uh, three cracking images there really really cool so i hope you've enjoyed today's video definitely something a little bit different with these woodland vlogs but it's something that i want to continue please let me know below if you enjoy this sort of content um, or whether or not you think it's rubbish that would be much appreciated um but yeah i hope you um, got something from this and that you may be starting to see a different approach to woodland photography as well with your own photography that would be awesome thank you as always for tuning in and i shall see you on the next one out mm -hmm.